Yeah. Action, action always speaks louder than words. Right. And this, and this is so crucial because there's uh, with Bitcoin, the the pen is literally more might, mightier than the sword. The mm -hmm. pen is literally what mightier than the sword because information is is more powerful uh, than than violence mm -hmm. in Bitcoin. Right. The information about the thing is the thing. The yeah. the knowing about it is owning it. Right. So. So we've turned something that this is back to the informational element. Mm. We now have a thing that is strictly informational. It's not a rock that you, you can use a gold mm. bar to, uh, to inflict harm on another right. person. You can bash his head in with a gold bar. Mm. You cannot do that with Bitcoin because it's just information. Mm -hmm. you, you interact with it through speech and through trading information yeah. uh, and trading is information that right. like, Back to this, there's there's something here. It's purely there, volitional, a, right? There's no oh volitional. There's no, involu like there's no involuntary <laughs> element to it. Yeah, volitional. Then, I have to I have to write that down. <laughs> that's going into the book. <laughs> Happy to help. I want to echo something you said earlier too, where egocentric has a bad connotation. But I should add here, like it does not preclude selfless behavior. Like egocentric does not mean I can't go start a charity right? Or go, nope. go perform so act, some act of altruism. No. So long as it's done freely, that fits perfectly within the, uh, the private property, uh, I guess, moral framework, moral and practical framework that Rothbard lays out. Yeah, th this ties into to praxeology perfectly because like uh, uh, ra being rational in, in, praxe uh, in the praxeological sense of the word is not being morally correct or anything it's mm. just acting in a certain way right. uh, voluntarily to acquire some end it's right. it's being so so this a uh, semantics thing there too uh, mm. i mean uh yeah yeah it's really interesting um i found myself too just the hillebrand series and reading that book really i think rothbard's views have not been assimilated into global consciousness at all like i guess you no, could no. say something even larger like we humanity has a blind spot when it comes to praxeology overall yeah that, right? definitely like it's, it's just the word even the word like if you don't have, i didn't know the word until i got into bitcoin no. you put it so. you put it in an excellent way in another part we did and you said mm -hmm. uh praxeology is to the subjective what mathematics is to the objective mm, yeah and i uh, oh that's beautiful <laughs> Thank uh, you. and uh, because it really is it's the great missing school subject yeah and no wonder because look at who's financing all the schools right. i mean the praxeology no single entity can gain from praxeology being taught anywhere right so so there's no incentive to for anyone to teach praxeology to anyone else. There is an incentive to teach some an engineer mathematics. If you want right. to put an engineer somewhere in society and build a bridge, you right. need to teach him you need to teach him mathematics first. Right. But there, there's no real incentive for any leader of any sort to to teach praxeology to others. Does Bitcoin fix that too? Because I guess that's what we're doing right now, right? <laughs> it does, and that's the beautiful thing. Because all of a, all of a sudden, we can put aside our egos, yeah. and we can think about the greater good because we have the time and the means to do that. Yeah, which we didn't have before when we were stuck in the hamster's wheel, and the hamster was dead, but the wheel was keeping on spinning and spinning and spinning. Right. Uh, I mean, the hamster was dead inside, but the wheel kept on spinning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so this is the beautiful thing. We're we're through, through the discovery of Bitcoin, we so many of us are discovering Praxeology and Rothbard mm -hmm. uh, uh, and all of these guys, uh, and we're spreading the word about that. And there's so much profound stuff in the in. I mean, Rothbard's The Ethics of Liberty, I think it scares a lot of people away because it says some harsh things about mm -hmm. a fetus being a, a parasite on the mother right. and stuff yeah. like that. He uses <laughs> wording that is not, there, there are no filters on it. He's yeah. just laying it out there as it is yeah. with no the, the, <laughs> through the lens of property, through the lens of property. Yeah. And it's, it is the proper way of, <laughs> uh, I mean, proper yeah. read, read that. Yeah. The proper way to look at property. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
as as we say, uh, if I raise my arm, I'm the one that did that. So my arm is of my course. property. Yes. If if you say that it isn't, you are using your vocal cords to say that it isn't, and right. that's your and property. Is... Your vocal cord is your property. So like there's and everything we make with our hands, everything we put together. Yeah. is a product of our body which are is our property yeah. and that's where morals should stem from and it's back to the schoolyard again this is so basic don't kill each other don't hurt each other don't take each other's stuff yeah 100 percent. yeah we need to grow up as a species effectively and then i would i would point out yeah. here too this is a hard one the that is the essence of fiat when someone attempts to make the patterns that they generate with their vocal cords uh, as a substitute for movement of your left arm. Like I, yeah. you're a fiat perpetrator. <laughs> exactly. I want to be able to say something and have your action take place. That is so, it contradicts reality so blatantly and obviously. It's like, when and if I had arguments with people about this, they're like, yeah, I don't believe in that self-ownership, that individual self-ownership. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like you're actually sitting here owning yourself Posing an argument against individual yeah. self ownership. Yeah. Like your argument against individual self ownership yeah, yeah, is an expression of your individual self ownership. It's oxymoronic it makes on no so sense. many levels. Yeah. yeah, that's it's like the word free trade agreements. Right, it's, it's oxy <laughs> oxymoronic to its core. Like, yeah. and and this is the thing. But I I hope that Bitcoin does with others what it has done to me and what it has done to you, because I I mean yeah. I think both you and I had. Uh, different views of reality before bitcoin than we we do after Certainly. and, and we've way. not yeah and we've not like i mean we've come to similar conclusions but we've done it from very different angles and like mm. this is happening to so many of us now and uh, mm. it's it's so great to see this community grow and uh, uh yeah i i i i just wish that more people saw like because there are many thinkers, uh, mm. many of them have been on this show, and they they all have very interesting ideas about stuff. But it's like they're they have a blind spot to Bitcoin. They they haven't yet mm -hmm. they haven't yet seen this thing, yeah, and seen it for what it is, and seen it how how like just you don't even have to believe in it. You just or. or think that it works so you, you can think that bitcoin will go to zero at some point but mm -hmm. just just allow yourself to think if this thing works as advertised what does that imply right <laughs> so that yeah. that's that's the thing if this truly is rules without rulers mm -hmm. what does that imply if if we have an absolutely scarce element zero mm -hmm. <laughs> that is teleportable mm -hmm. uh, indestructible no. you know all this stuff property independent of state that? yeah yeah independent of everything yeah. uh, property that is in the informational true intellectual property the first intellectual property that is actually a property mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah no it's it's a great point and i just i mean that's the namesake of the show what is money because i feel like if you just ask that question seriously yeah. Like if you really take it seriously and just keep asking the question until you like, I haven't figured it out, right? Do the damn show on it. I've been thinking about Bitcoin nonstop for five years. I can't give you one clean answer for what is money. I could go, I could just lean on the Austrian answer, universal medium of exchange, but it's a lot of things, right? And it unwraps a lot of, or uncovers a lot of rabbit holes. I really believe anyone that asks themselves that question, they, they do end up in the Bitcoin rabbit hole. And then my bet, I guess, is that it will be similarly transformative for people as it has been for me and you and others. Yeah. That uh, we've asked ourselves, what is entropy in, in <laughs> this, in this episode as yeah. well. Uh, another question I'd like to pose is what is energy? Mm. Uh, because like you can, uh, I think in a way, Bitcoin is much more akin to energy because all the, all the, types of money that preceded bitcoin uh none of them were absolutely scarce none of them mm -hmm. had these amazing properties that mm -hmm. that bitcoin does uh, so so i think in a way it's degrading to bitcoin to call it money 
mm. because by money we mean something inferior to it mm -hmm. uh, by the definition of the word because we've never seen anything that is absolutely scarce and like we've never had a like a way of converting el electrical energy into subjective energy if you will mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. uh <laughs> the um, the ability to store electrical energy convert it into another form is not kinetic energy it's not it's uh, mathematical energy or mm -hmm. digital <laughs> um, energy something I, I i hate the word digital but mm -hmm. mathematical energy let's call it that but uh and you can store it uh, uh, and send it through time and space without mm -hmm. loss mm -hmm. other like fiat money is good for sending across space mm -hmm. Uh, uh that's why it took over the world right. and gold was good for storing value over time mm -hmm. that's why it got hoarded by super villains in mm -hmm. vaults and mm -hmm. port knocks mm -hmm. so <laughs> uh but bitcoin does both and yeah. electricity electricity is a uh it's it's good at neither uh, you 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 can't send it across vast distances mm -hmm. without a a loss of it Right. And you and you can't store it in batteries so without the loss of it. Batteries are still crap compared mm -hmm. to Bitcoin because Bitcoin can store it through space and time. Uh, and you don't even need that much bandwidth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you need a, a very limited Bitcoin uh, Internet connection and you can use Bitcoin ev everywhere. And mm. uh, it's, it's not going away. Uh, it's, it, it is there. It's an emergent phenomenon. Like I said, every aspect, every every single uh, aspect of it, it fuels its success as the other aspect of it. And it's just yeah. happening at every level of society everywhere. Like nation states are adopting it. Big corporations mm -hmm. are adopting it. And most of all, normal people are adopting it. They're seeing that they can now play the same game as every other entity right. in the human race. Yeah. There's no There's no us versus them anymore. We're all the same. Right. and it's just yeah I, no, I, it's it's well said i sound I, like an evangelist but. <laughs> <laughs>